Nathan Thomas is the Ward 3 representative for the city of Cape Girardeau. He has been serving since August 2019 when he was appointed and was officially elected in June 2020. He's also a member of multiple community organizations. Nathan, good to see you. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks. So what, uh, just right off the bat, what, what was the reason why you decided to, to get into public service the way that you have? I've always been one, uh, the service really drives me and it's a passion um, for me. And uh, I, you know, back in 2019, I live in Ward 3, there was a vacancy created um, because a ward, the current ward member, or the current council member for Ward 3 had to move outside of the, the ward. So um, I have a background in government and policy and that's what um, I had uh, living out in Washington, D.C. at the federal level, been involved in different state houses. So I knew how to understand policy, um, read it, and I knew that I could hit the ground running. And so I thought, you know what, this opportunity came about. I talked to my wife, talked to my family, and said, may as well jump in because I know there's a limited time, limited window left of that term. Sure. Um, that I could hit the ground running and there were some important things being moved through and um, use those, that skill set that I had developed over years before uh, for the benefit of the city that I live in, that my family, we're raising our family in and that we love, so. And then in 2020, you decided to, to run and, and were elected that, into that same spot. Exactly, I decided to run um, for a full term after that. It was one of the most uh, unique um, elections, I, I would say, of all yeah. time, because it was right when the pandemic and the shutdown hit, and uh, we had a had a primary the day after Groundhog Day um, in February <laughs> in the snow, and then so I had yard signs out in January all the way until the postponed election that went from April into June because of the shutdown. So um, yeah, I had to, had to fight hard and long, you know, you know, I always joke that the people who, who agreed so graciously to put a yard sign um, in their yard, uh, and back in January, I didn't expect to have to weed eat around them. <laughs> <in> <laughs> yeah, June, exactly. So, yeah. Um, and I know we, want, we want to talk some just about how the different layers of city government work. Mm -hmm. um, so on, on the, let's just kind of get into that, you know, on the, on the council level, the city charter, how does all that work for the city of Cape? Well, you know, the, the city charter, we are, we are a charter city. You know, in Missouri, there's classifications of cities um, as a uh, political subdivision of the state of Missouri which is obviously uh, governed by its state constitution. Sure. Um, there are third class and fourth class cities, but there's also charter cities. So we, as a community or a municipality of Cape Girardeau have um, uh, long ago, years ago, had developed our own constitution, if you will, in our charter, which governs us. And so we uphold that. And so there's um, certain advantages and disadvantages to being a class city or being an independently chartered city. And um, uh, we, though, as um, um, as as a council and as the the city government and the officials, we. Uh, our, our number one job is to be, you know, good stewards of this, the taxpayer dollars, you know, so um, to provide the services that the city and the citizens feel are necessary and that those taxpayer dollars should be, should be used for. And that then, um, you not only pay taxes at the local level, but it goes to the state level and it goes to the, the federal level. And um, the, I think, you know, that's one way using my past experience that I've uh, uh, tried tried hard to do is to look for ways to maximize um, the impact of those state dollars or not say to those tax dollars so that we don't have any redundant services or redundancies of, of spending money that could have been handled whether it's from the federal level or the state level so and a, a CAPE has a city manager. Mm -hmm. um, how does that work with the council? So the council uh, has the authority, you know, we are obviously elected um, by, uh, by our wards and then the, the mayor is elected by the citywide. Sure. Um, but we only hire two people on the city staff. So um, there are uh, hundreds of city staff, um, but the only one we hire is the city manager, and he's effectively like the, the CEO, if you will, um, that operate, that then hires the rest of um, the department heads and, and, and the rest of the city staff and oversees them in the operations. We act as more of a, a board of directors, um, helping to advise, helping to direct, um, and moving forward. But you may ask who's the second person that we yes, hire. Yes, that's, that's my next question. Yeah, that's the municipal judge and so just like 
you know, there's separation of uh, different um, powers at the federal level with the, you know, Supreme Court Judiciary Branch and then the executive branch with the president and then the legislative branch. Uh, we effectively have that with the municipal court um, is separate from the the day-to-day -day operations of the city government. So we hire the municipal judge. So, so I know you represent Ward Three, mm -hmm. um, but but obviously you 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 have the entire city in mind uh, in your role uh, on the city council. How do you kind of balance that? Uh, those that you represent but with the whole city in mind um, it, you know I tell anybody that's you know a newly elected council member you know you're elected by your ward but you you're right you hit the nail right on the head you're you're there to represent the city sure. as a whole and so uh, my wife and I are business owners in town um, we have our kids in the school system and so we meet a variety of people and you know my way my role is to be a gateway between them and what they may need or what they may have an idea for at the at the local municipal city level and so uh, I'm there to represent not only them but you know businesses downtown um, children or parents in the school system whatever it may be um, so you know it, you're not there just to represent your ward you're there for um, the vibrancy of the whole city and much like uh, we can't just look within the microscope of our city if you look nationwide statewide um, municipalities that thrive are the ones that the county the city neighboring cities uh, and and the state really collectively work together um, to make sure that the area thrives and that's really where we need to to go as a city is make sure that we're all on the same page to move ourselves forward so as the city of Cape Girardeau thrives so does Ward 3 so that's that's really um, my long answer to your question well that and we have about a minute left that was my my question and you kind of hit on this then how does that relationship with the county you know with the mm -hmm. state you know how does that work together, all speak in the same language, you know, going after the same goals. Yeah, exactly. You basically, you have to work very cohesively with them because it's a, a matter of, um, that, that's how this, the cities, the, the areas that thrive and some of them that are really close to us, you know, so we want to make sure that we, we continue to set Cape Girardeau up top. And that's not just Cape Girardeau, the city, that's the county. And that's not just the county of Cape Girardeau, that's all of Southeast Missouri because um, then the citizens thrive and we want to make sure that we uh, continue to be a place that people want to move to, that they want to live, they want to raise their family, they want to invest their dollars in um, and create businesses in and stay here. And so um, I, we love Cape Girardeau and it, it's an exciting time for Cape Girardeau and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds. Real quick, some spirited debate at times in those council meetings. It can be, you know, everybody brings their own lens to issues, you know. Sure. It's not like what you may see uh, uh, at the federal level that you see on CNN or Fox News, um, but, uh, you know, we all we all hash it out. We work very well together, you know. Like I said, it's an exciting time. New new city manager, new mayors, a couple new council members, um, right. uh, new finance director, but it's that in new opportunities there as well with just citywide, countywide, statewide, um, new state representative for our area. So uh, it's, it's exciting times so all right well Nathan that'll, that'll do it thank you so much for joining us well thanks for having me